the Lord's charging us crazy money. So what they would do is they would take the patient, if they could bill, if they could bill Mass Health or they could bill the insurance company, they would do it. But if they couldn't, they would charge us $75 a ride in an ambulance in any other state. You can't drive in an ambulance from here to the kitchen door for the $17, right? So, so, so we thought that was a good deal. Uh, and then we had the local cab company come in and say, we'll take them for nothing. Uh, because everyone has an addicted person. Everyone. Amen. I feel like I'm in church. I got a table over here that's just like <laughs> so, so, and then Uber came in. Uber came in, right? And I didn't even know Uber was a thing. So, so they said, we want to partner with you all over the United States, any way you take somebody. We want to be there to pick them up and take them wherever they're going for nothing. And we want to train all our drivers in Narcan and put a button on our app. So that if you, want, if you need Narcan, you can put a button on our app and be a the nursery. Don't clap, because we can't partner with them because they're in so much trouble with the feds. <laughs> so that hasn't happened yet. That hasn't happened yet. But it's in the works. And we've had a lot of agencies step up and say, look, you know, just simply that I haven't, you know, this has touched me as well. And I, you know, I have a company that does this and I want to help. Uh, it's sort of like the Kevin Kai, if you build it, they'll come. I said no cell phones on audio. So, um, so 280, 280 some odd people into uh, treatment, uh, great success stories. Uh, the efficacy of the program does not rely for us on whether or not someone relapses or there's a recidivism rate is better or worse. For us, police, it's about facilitating into treatment as opposed to arrest. Um, uh, we love our relapses, not that they relapse, but, they, but we love that they come right back to us. What we tell people when they come in the door is you just started the first day of your, the last recovery you will ever have in your whole life because the Gloucester Police Department is going nowhere for the next thousand years. And if you decide, as long as you come in with a willingness to get help, we will help you over and over and over and over and over again with no judgment. So, so then, uh, as I said, these and I pricing went down. We know that our Attorney General, Moore Haley, uh, won a settlement against Alpha Star for $325,000 uh, in August or September, uh, where they said, oh, you know, we've kind of gouged the price a little bit. And they paid $325,000 to the public safety Narcan bulk purchasing account so that at least can keep costs down for public safety so that we'll all have it. And I think we can take care of the rest of that um, uh, pricing with Narcan so it's affordable and available to everybody. And the legislative piece uh, is coming along nicely. As you've seen with the Senate uh, proposed bill, the governor's proposed bill, and now you'll see uh, input that we've had into the House of Representatives uh, bill that will be uh, proposed probably in the next couple of weeks. Uh, you know, the governor has taken a great stand. Uh, a lot of this success is timing, you know, finally, right? Uh, we are dealing with something that you guys have all dealt with for years. We, in law enforcement, were late to the game, sorry, but we're here, the cavalry's here for you. We want to lend our voice to you to make it stronger by saying we refuse to do this. We refuse to work for pharmaceuticals and insurance companies who would rather a patient be incarcerated or dead. Uh, we want to get a person with a diagnosed illness into treatment. And believe me, it's a hard mindset for a cop to follow because we're so used to doing things in the ingrained way of, um, of uh, arrest and uh, just let everybody else deal with it. But we see that it's been adopted now. We have 55 uh, treatment centers in 19 states and we have 60, I'm sorry, $6 million in scholarships available to the Boston program. So we have the ability to send anyone with any type of insurance or no insurance anywhere in the country for free for the price of a plane ticket. We have 41 police departments in nine states that have partnered with us so far. We have another 89 that we can't, we simply can't get to. So we're writing them up as fast as we can go. We're getting their plans going and we're gonna put them out there. So we'll have 150 by the end of November. We expect to have over 250. Uh, they're starting their own programs without even calling us, which is great. Uh, PARI was created very early on, the Police Assisted Addiction Recovery Initiative, uh, pariusa.org. 
uh, and that exists to facilitate not only this program, but partnerships with law enforcement throughout the country so that we can have that loud voice of saying, this is, this is a, a drug war lost. Uh, we were attacking addicts instead of a drug, uh, and we need to change our model. And as a louder voice, a partnership with all these law enforcement, we think we can move a lot faster. We've engaged MAP with an H. You guys all know MAP? Yep. Anybody from MAP here? Oh, good. They're actually, they're actually, uh, they're actually working in close partnership with Barry. And um, can I announce? Who am I looking at? I don't have anybody here with me. Can I announce that? Uh, I will announce. I don't care. So, <laughs> in a couple of weeks, you'll hear through the grapevine that MAP is going to provide Gloucester with a continuous care coordination system which means that anyone we take in, we will work with MAP to provide them information on their particular client. So if it's a Tufts Mass Health or a Fallon Mass Health or whatever, they'll know when the client gets into care. And then they will work with you guys in the treatment center to develop a effective and efficient model for that person going forward. Wow. That's big, right? <laughs> that and that's going to be a big announcement uh, in December. It's going to launch January 4th. So what I, what I would like to see is, an, is, is treatment centers and treatment professionals embrace that as a partnership. Because what we've seen is an inability to communicate between insurance and treatment providers. Mm -hmm. you know, and it's like, it's like two sisters. You know, everybody points fingers. And I'm just talking about a third, a third party looking in on this, you know, a police officer who's used to quelling disturbances. And it, you, you, know, you all get check minuses for 412 with others. Um, but, but it's not your fault, and it's not really the insurance company's fault either. Um, it's, it's a disconnect that's inherent in the system. And we want to work so that all of you who have treatment centers have the ability to access a database so that if uh, you know, if BMC, is anybody from BMC here? You guys rock. <laughs> you guys rock. Because every time we call you, the, your answer is like, fuck it, son, we don't care. <laughs> every time we call. And if we get, because there's all kinds, you know, everybody has different standards of, of but you guys are like, sure, we don't care. We'll, so, you know, we'll build a bed and put it in the bubble. <laughs> you guys are great. So, uh, and there are a lot of treatment centers that we find with that are fantastic, but uh, if they were here, I was going to give them a shout out. So, but if, uh, but BMC should be able to say, if we don't have any beds, click, 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 Spectrum has them. Yeah. Spectrum has yeah. a bed. Or, uh, Danvers or Tewksbury or AdCare or whoever has a bed. We want to see that system in place so that you, at, you know, when you're sitting there taking those intake calls, I don't have a bed, but if you call here right now, you know, there'll be a bed for you there. Um, so the responsibility will be on you to make sure that it's updated. But we hope to see that, you know, in 18 to 24 months, you know, a system that can coordinate. You show me a five minute time? Did you say you were going to do that? Okay, good. So, <laughs> we hope to see that. Um, we hope to see, uh, you know, we've engaged pharmaceuticals. Who, are there anybody from pharmaceuticals? They, in fact, suck. So, <laughs> but, again, we engaged them first. We are welcome to the table. We, they've got till December 3rd to come back with some answers to us. And if they don't give us the answers we like, you'll see it on Facebook. Um, and they can decide if the products that they sell over the counter are worth losing business over because that's what we're going to ask for. Uh, we asked them, we had a lot of asks of the, um, of the pharmaceuticals, and one of them, which was you know, borderline, borderline insanity, and they didn't go for it, was we wanted them to take uh, liability for every single person who was addicted who could be traced back to a prescription yeah. of a drug they made. Yeah. Yeah, they didn't go for that. <laughs> but they were, they were appalled that we would ask that. Great dream, how, how dare you take our incredibly curing medicines and turn them into a vilified, addictive drug. Oh, yeah. Amazing. But so our program exists. Uh, it's spreading, uh, you know, really uh, largely over the over the uh, uh, entire country. Um, we're encountering and, and, and 
overcoming barriers simply by asking why. We don't think that we're doing anything, um, you know, of great achievement here. Uh, and then what we say is that since when, especially for law enforcement, since when did any any activity that involved reaching out to someone in need become anything more than a responsibility? When did that become an achievement? Uh, it's a responsibility uh, for all of you, for all of us in law enforcement, and I love that we're all at the same table now. I love that we can we we seem to be able to add a voice for you guys. We we seem to be able to be the muscle behind the magic of, of doing your work, and we're really good at holding people accountable. So that's kind of what we're doing, and uh, and we're holding ourselves accountable to a new model. That's the Gloucester program in a nutshell. And, uh, cards on the way out and just send them to me. There's no index cards. Um, so if anybody has any questions, sir? Hi, good morning. You're great. <laughs> yes. I, here's my question. Dual diagnosis, mentally ill substance abuse. They, they come into the police station. Do you help? Are, are they, how do you deal with them? Yeah, you know what? We, we take anyone with a substance abuse issue, we take them and we intake them. The center asks those particular questions. And so the center will say, you know, are you this, are you that? Make a determination if they are dual diagnosis. And then if the particular center doesn't have dual diagnosis facilities, then they either suggest or we have one on our list that we send them to. Because one thing I see over and over, 35 years in the part of mental health, people who have both issues need the substances addressed, they get section 12 to a psych hospital where there's nothing except that maybe an oxy prescription on the way out from somebody who doesn't know what they're doing. You're right. But you, you have an interface with them on some level to get some specialized dual hospitals to take them. We do, and again, you Thank know, you. we so we kind of reached in to this system and were pulled in really far. And we don't want to be in this far into like making a determination about dual diagnosis and things like that. That's your responsibility. Um, we want to pull back out and say, okay, you know, we're facilitating treatment. It's up to you guys to figure out what treatment, how, how you can do that, how you can facilitate that particular individual. Yes. No, it's a question. It's really not your area, but the next step. Can you please get help? The way you try. Why does the jail reserve substance abuse treatment for people who were sentenced when they might have more of a shot if they started substance abuse treatment with those people that are being held in 85? So I have a very thoughtful answer to that, and it's, it starts with, nah, nah, you're wrong. Um, because Essex, Essex